What's up, mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the Reseller Mom Show. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reseller Mom Versations. I am so excited to be here with Ashley. She is Avant Ashes on Instagram, and I'll let her tell us what that's all about. I'm curious. I love people's <laughs> Instagram handles. Um, so welcome, Ashley. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about yourself, where we can find you, where you sell, give me your lowdown, and then we can chat. <laughs> okay, so I'm Avant Ashes on Instagram, Bunny's Style on uh, Poshmark. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I started selling on Poshmark in 2015, actually February 2015. Okay. So it's been five years of reselling, but I initially went on the app to... Um, resell my old clothes, mm -hmm. clothes, well, clothes that I like never wore. And I was just sick and tired of getting like $3 here and there at Plato's closet for like a Marc Jacobs dress. And I'm like, right. no, yeah, I don't want to call it to you. Plato's? Wow. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> like a dollar if they even take anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And leaving with bags of clothes still. Um, and I was like, there's got to be another way. Um, I had just had an unsuccessful like yard sale and I was about to get married. So I'm trying to like clear out my closet. So I looked online. I'm like, how do you sell your clothes on like resell your clothes online? And there was a blog about like all the different resale sites. Ah. And um, yeah, Poshmark just seemed like the easiest, most legit one. I'm like, I don't know. Like I've never sold anything online. Like, am I going to get the money? Like, how is it going to work? And, um, so then, so I start like after the first week of being on Poshmark, I sold my first thing. Oh wow. And I would, yeah. And, um, it was just like all about posh love and everything. And I was like, I'm just trying to like sell my stuff, you know, <laughs> but very quickly I realized like there is really a community on there like social media. It's really kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, I very quickly jumped on the train of like, Oh my gosh, like I go to these certain like warehouse stores and I can get like really great designers for super cheap. Let me try to like flip this stuff. Right. And I don't know if I like got the idea from somebody else That's on there gonna, or yeah, I was going to ask you that. Like, did you come to that conclusion on your own or did something say like, oh, this is a thing? Because I wish I kind of, I kind of know the moment it happened for me with kids stuff, you know, and then that transitioned into women's. But it's just really funny hearing people's stories about like, when did the light bulb finally, you know, what's that story? I'm fascinated with that story. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> this story is like, I don't know if you ask any, like, any of my friends, like I'm always trying to make money. Yeah. So okay. I just, I've always had like the entrepreneur, like how can I make money kind yeah. of mindset. So I think it was just really <clears throat> knowing like I can get a David Lerner dress for $3 at this place, new with tags. And I, and, and like the price tag says like $300 on it. Right. I can totally make money from this. Right. And like I said, I don't know. I don't like there wasn't like, in, I mean, there might have been Instagram or Facebook groups at the time. I think there were Facebook groups at the time yeah, for Poshmark. I've gotten into it, yeah. But um, I wasn't like connected to any of those. I think it was just like maybe just putting two and two together right. in a way. Right. But there were more just like closet resellers back then. Yeah. Um, or, you know, like people just selling out of their own closet. Right. But I, so I started off with like spending just a little bit of money of like my own money. And, um, then I started doing like even like bigger retail, retail arbitrage. Like I went to TJ Maxx and I would like buy like an $80 Kate Spade bag and like hold on to the receipt and be like, okay, if this sells for like $300, then I won't take it back. And I, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> that's but I used to I've buy it, yeah. stuff and like and then like towards the end of like the 30-day period I'd be like I'm like taking this off or whatever and like yeah. put it on sale or something and sometimes it would sell sometimes I would just take the stuff back I did that like once or twice and I'm like 
this is too stressful. Nerve wracking. And yeah, you need to like keep track of everything and make sure you have a receipt. And mm -hmm. I've never actually done that. I've paid up a little bit doing retail arbitrage at a TJ Maxx, but I think I've mentioned it before. Like I'm terrible. <laughs> like I don't just, I don't pick the right stuff and I get so drawn in because I find like four of something. I'm like, yes, this is going to be great. And yeah. Once and so <laughs> over and over again. I love multiple quantity listings. And like, I have these Nanette Lepore stupid jeans that I haven't sold and yeah and it's you know it's higher it's a higher value oh, oh yeah made swimsuit too yeah so i'm I've, i was paying way too much i was just like thinking that i could it was like such a test and trial period at the right. time and you're actually still, still you're still used to retail prices at that yeah. point so when you are drawn in by the oh i can get it for this clearly i'll be able to sell it for mm -hmm. that but you're not really yeah. checking comps yet that's like a terrible, <laughs> oh yeah, terrible time. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't get stuck with anything like that. <laughs> but um, my first few flips were like huge, and from that point on, I just, I just kept doing it. I was like the first of anybody I knew, right, that was doing something like that. Um, and then so it it, sh it was just like a hobby kind of thing, and then cut to, I guess, like getting married that year. We always kind of knew in the back of our minds that like, I could always have this if like we had children. Right. Um, but still at the time it was super part time. I yeah. mean, I was just doing it for fun pretty much. And what was your um, like, normal day job? You know, real, real person. My normal day job <laughs> at that time, I was cleaning houses. Like oh. I was just like my own like business person. I, yeah, I just like contract myself out to like friends and family. Um, I was doing like home care, like in home care for um, this one lady who had a artist surgery. I was cleaning her house and then they wanted me to like take care of her. Right. Um, but then I got a job at Saks Fifth Avenue, um, the warehouse, and I was their inventory coordinator for off Fifth Avenue, hmm. um, which was an awesome experience. Um, I was doing Poshmark at the time and they knew that, but it was like, you know, you basically sign an agreement. Like if you buy anything from our warehouse store, like you can't resell it or anything. Oh, okay. So um, they knew they had a lot of yeah. people coming in there and stuff too. What but, is, um, with the, if, like, what is an inventory coordinator do? I'm just really curious. Like, what is it? So, you know, like when, <laughs> you know, like when you order something online and it's like one left or whatever. And then like your order gets canceled or whatever. Mm -hmm. That Multiple. normally happens because somebody um, in the warehouse scanned in like into their system that like an extra one and it shows online as, as, as if it's there. Mm -hmm. um, so my job was basically to like fix all errors in inventory, always be counting. Um, okay fixing like being um in contact with customer service when they have like a customer wanting to return something or you know they they order something and it comes in a different color uh, and then come to find out it actually had the upc of like the black color and not the yellow got it just like crazy it's basically like problem control right right that's fixing interesting, all the though. problems from doing reselling now and kind of dealing with that kind of thing in one way or the, I find mm -hmm. that interesting. I probably would have never found that interesting before, but like mm -hmm. now as a reseller, I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah. Interesting. So, okay. So, and then on the mom side of things, so you, you were reselling before you got married, but it was part-time. You always knew that you could do it. And so you were, you had these jobs. So then you must've had your baby soon after getting married. And then no, to do not this. actually. No. no. Um, so we got married. I was just doing it as a hobby. We moved to Colorado. Basically three year, I think it's three years into our marriage. I got pregnant. So I got pregnant last year. And um, I also was also diagnosed with um, adrenal fatigue. And my doctor said that if you ever get pregnant, which we were already planning to, um, if you ever get pregnant, you cannot work where you are. I was working at a restaurant at the time. 
Ah. So a year ago, like I had to quit sax because we moved and everything. Right. Um, so I just picked up a restaurant job because working retail does not pay at all. Right. <laughs> and um, so I got the job at the restaurant. My doctor was like, you can't work under the stress if you get pregnant. So as soon as I got pregnant, we pulled me from my job last December. And I was like <laughs> on Instagram, I'm like, I'm going full time, guys. And that's not the case. I'm not. <laughs> uh. I am not full time at all. <laughs> I don't put in full-time hours. I barely put in part-time hours. So that's where we're at right now. Okay. So, and, but so you have, how old is your, cause you've got a baby. Yes. He's okay. seven months old and <laughs> we, <laughs> just God, announced, a baby. <laughs> we just announced that I'm pregnant with our second. So. Oh, awesome. Oh, okay. Now I see that one more love. Less sleep <laughs> on your Instagram. <laughs> well, because I thought I, I might have mistaken it then. I thought I saw like an older kid, so I didn't know if you had two already, but maybe I made that up. I might actually, <laughs> I think it's you did a video and it you can't see your hair, and so I thought that was like a <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought it was young. So I thought you already have like an older one and then the baby. Got it. Okay, so you have a baby yeah. and you have another baby. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Woo. Well, I know it's good getting them all, you know together <laughs> yeah that was our it was our plan it was planned Good. but you know we didn't have high expectations last year of me going full-time like in our minds full-time but um you know I pushed through during pregnancy like I tried to create like habits because like I never like was like okay this is like I have all this free time right how am I going to handle it? Right. Um, plus being sick with morning sickness and just like the fatigue and everything and the adrenal fatigue on top of everything. Yeah. So we didn't really have like high expectations, but I was like, I'm going to take this year to try to put in place like a routine, right. okay. habits of some sort. We moved like three times, two to three times last year. Um, as well as I went back to Maryland for like 10 days, just like, it, it like, didn't go as smoothly as I wanted right, it to. Right. So you couldn't really. I would say right now I'm getting. Like, that you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I did still make like decent sales. I mean, nothing like I see on Instagram or anything like that. But. Um, everybody's business is everybody's business. Like it's. Yeah. It's cool to put out that stuff. I think it is great. I do like to see it. It is motivating, mm -hmm. but I, yeah. as long as you're somebody that can take it all with the grain of salt, you know, because I think some people can, and so that's got, they use it to motivate them. And then some people get all kooky about it. So, you know, you've got to figure out <laughs> looking at that. I mean, you know, is it good or is it not good? And now your life's about to get even more hectic. So really that stuff is probably going to seem way, you know, way yeah. more out of your reach for a little while. But now that you already know, like you're in such a good place because you already know what's involved with it. You've been in the community for a while. You've been doing it for a while. You've got the one kid. Now you're going to have up. So like, you're going to be a pro at both. And then all it is, is like the time to get your sleep back and get that sucker, you yeah. know, getting up on his own and, <laughs> or her, or her, <laughs> you know, like, what, Come on. You can, and you know, it's funny. Cause I feel like the baby stage was actually fine for reselling. Mm -hmm. It was the, I always say like, it was the one and a half to two and a half. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> eight. And then you'll have two, possibly one going in one direction, one going in the other direction. Both of them are pulling down bookcases and pulling books yeah. off shelves or I don't know what. It's going to be hard. <laughs> I know. I know. to stick them in a wagon right and, like, and let them watch you or something. <laughs> well, my mom just ordered us um, this huge like play yard that we're going to set up in our house. So yeah. I'm hoping that's going to help. Yeah. I don't know. And, and that's what, like when Gio was, I look back sometimes at the, the, you know, pictures and stuff. We did have like those little play, you know, gates up and we had the foam mats down and he just had all yeah. the stuff in there. And I'm like, and he just sat in there and played. And sometimes yeah. I'd be in there with them. Sometimes I'd fold laundry outside. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'd take pictures when I was doing like flat lays you know, nearby, um, cool. and could still watch him right there. And we were in the same room. And so he, he was just fine to explore what was right in front of him. He didn't yeah. know about 
all the things that he could get himself <laughs> to do. <laughs> but then once they figured that out, that's when it's really challenging. It's like whatever you can get done when they're sleeping. Yeah. Because they'll put, if you have lights, they'll knock the lights down. You know what I mean? Like they'll just, they'll drool all over your clothes <laughs> and I don't want him touching the, I never want him to touch yeah. them because I don't wash them all. So I yeah. never wanted Gio to like touch the clothes. Um, but you'll figure, you know, you'll promise figure away. Yeah. So exciting. So the, when is the new baby coming? She's coming. She, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. She's coming um, June, mid-June. Okay. And he turns one mid-July. Okay. So two under one for about a month, but I'll have help. Wow. And I won't be reselling during that time. Uh, and that's the thing. Vacation mode, you know, do a big sale, sell whatever you can right before, you know, get rid of as much as you can so you're not just sitting on stuff that might not hold value or yeah. whatever until you're ready to pick it back up again. But I think that's, I don't think I've, I'm trying to think on mom conversations. It's nice to have different people with different, you know, life scenarios and like, you know, older kids, school age kids, young kids. And, and so I don't know if I've had anybody that was actually pregnant while we're doing the show and like the, you know, the baby is coming. So that's cool. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. I've been watching your episodes and I find it like super encouraging for me, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's like musty TV and I'm not probably winning any YouTube, you know, like daytime awards or anything like that with it, but it's for us, for the people that are in, uh, like, yeah, I think it's very interesting. It was the whole reason why I wanted to start the channel in the first place was to connect and find out really selfishly, like, so school age mom, like, tell me exactly how much I'm going to get done. Cause right now I'm daydreaming about the time <laughs> when Gio can go to school five days a week for seven or eight hours or however it is long. Like, I'm just like, what? And I won't have to get up at four in the morning anymore. And I could have a big chunk of time. And like, yeah. it sounds amazing. And that's really why I wanted to do it. Cause I could find out how is it? Mm -hmm. But then they kind of tell me like, oh, you have to do homework. And then there's sports and then there's play <laughs> and I'm like, oh. There goes that master plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me, so, so you're on a Poshmark only or other platforms too, or what do you got going on? Only Poshmark. Okay. Um, I thought about, so the moment that I was like this close to branching out, I think it was Macari. I was, cause I heard like, it's so easy it to um, process to Macari. Yeah. As soon as I checked it out, they had changed their shipping plan or shipping thing. And I was like, this is so difficult. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I don't even understand this. Like, do you not, do you not weigh your items? Cause for Poshmark, you don't need to. Poshmark, yeah. Yeah. So if, I think and for I, UK people, they're already weighing their items most of yeah. the time. But if you're just on Poshmark, you really don't have a need. I just recently stopped weighing when I came off of eBay because I'm like, that takes extra time you know, in your per item yeah. process. And I wanted to try to get more things done. Um, so yeah, I mean, you do have to wait, but you could let it sell. Well, do, are you doing free shipping or you chart or you're not doing it anymore? Actually, anyway. I, yeah, I just checked it out for a minute. And then I like thought, and like, I talked to a few people about it and <clears throat> I think I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I could do it. Um, I would just have to like get my mentality, right. Get kind of like a streamlined process of like, thinking of like, how am I actually going to do this? Yeah. So I could set up the process and right. then I could start, you know, cross-listing. Right. I really just need to get an inventory system in place too, <laughs> because and everything's not like- Before baby number two comes, that would be good because then everything yeah. will already be set. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have your items like already in bags that you, um, like do you store them in bags? I would no. recommend, this is, I would recommend if you're taking recommendations, mm -hmm. nine by 12 resealable bag, because you can reuse it. You, if it sells in a bundle, you could put those two together and then save this. You could take it out of inventory. If it hasn't sold and you want to get like, you can just use them again and again. It's yeah. Not like the ones that have the, where you peel it off. I hate those. So yeah, the zipper ones and then the the number labels and you can get it all on Amazon. It's not that expensive. Um, you know, my sister just 
what transition into it. So she had everything just in bins loose and then just bagged and tagged everything. So now she knows exactly what bin it goes in, you know, what bag it is. It's very easy to find and it cuts down on the day of shipping time. It'll add <laughs> seconds to when you're doing it and putting it away. But for you with the babies, you may not know what every day is going to be like. And if something sells, you may just need to get it out the door. And so that process yeah. being quick and predictable will probably be helpful. That's why I did it before Gio went to school. It helped me with like being able to get him off to school and still do shipping really yeah. quickly. So yeah. And with cool. Mercari, it's, it's not too hard. I mean, I have the VA that helps me, which you can always, you know, look into getting a VA or using the software to do it. Um, but, and the weighing part isn't that big of a deal because if you did free shipping, which I do, and I think that helps me, I, I don't know what it would be like to charge for shipping, but I do free shipping. You don't have to weigh it until it actually sells. So when it sells, I don't do the shipping label until I weigh it, see what I need, and then ship it out. Mm. And you kind of know what's over a pound and what's under yeah. a pound, you know? So it's possible. For sure. Yeah. But Just that one little thing threw me off. I'm like, okay, well, I'm ready to process it now. I'm like, no. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think those two are great though, because, you know, they kind of go hand in hand in that it's mostly on your phone. You can do it on the computer, but it is mostly on your phone. They're pretty similar and they're free. So you're not getting into all yeah. of the eBay shenanigans, you know, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, I did um, a little bit of eBay for um, Saks, um, Saks Fifth Avenue because we had like this warehouse store that sold like returns and damaged items and stuff like that. Huh. And they knew that I did the Poshmark thing. So they kind of like pulled me aside like a few hours of the day to like list, like basically do what I do at home. At the time, I was taking like way too much time for everything. I was like way too, like way more of a perfectionist right. than I am now. But, um, it, they were kind of like iffy about it because like, you know, there were things being sold, but it was just like, they were afraid that they were going to get returns because of the, like, even though you post about the damages, right. You know? And, um, I guess where I'm getting at with that is that I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, this is not Poshmark. You guys should be on Poshmark. <laughs> right, right. That's why I hope companies like that don't do that. That would be very bad. <laughs> I was surprised that they even did that, honestly. I mean, I guess that's a good way to do it. It doesn't seem like it makes sense for the amount of like, you know, you, you think a company wants to be so automated with stuff and then here they just have like one lady like sitting here listing their returns on yeah. eBay, which I'm sure they probably have stacks of returns and you uh -huh. know, like, I don't know, that doesn't seem very efficient, but. And they were very um, successful in their store too. Like they had committed buyers. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Very cool. I love, I'm just looking at your Instagram. You, and I'm not one that like curates my Instagram content in any particular way. Yours is so pretty. I really like it. Cause it's like calm and muted, like the colors wise. I don't know. Do you have like, um, photography background or anything like that? You're just artsy and like doing, cause they're, they're really pretty photos and like, it looks Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I thank you so much. Um, I'm artsy. I like find any way to be creative. Um, before going like full time with reselling, I was like driving myself crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm not even. Oh, yeah. I, you I just before this. reseller mom years. That's what I call it. It's I'm I'm a reseller, but in reseller mom years. So that's clearly extending the life of how long it takes me to get things done. <laughs> well, I was always like had an. Like, I've always been creative, but um, basically the reason why it looks like really just so streamlined is because I have a pre, I use a preset. Oh, do you? Okay. Like one to two presets. Um, but yeah, I like taking photos. Yeah, and, no, they look great. I mean, just, you have some nice flat lays and yeah, it looks really cool. And I, ha I haven't clicked into your Poshmark closet. I didn't get a chance. Usually I do. 
So I was just looking at the Instagram. We have some cute, like you do your baby wearing and I see that. <laughs> That's awesome. You can get a heck of a lot done that oh, way. Yeah. Pretty soon though, you won't be able to do You probably have up to a year. He is so maybe heavy. Little, maybe now. a little bit. Yeah, it depends on how big he is. So, I man, I wish I could stuff Gio in there now as four years old. I wish I could just be like, get in there and let me just get something. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I looked into the back ones because at Disney sometimes, we go to Disney all the time and people have like, it's kind of like what you would wear for hiking. Yeah. It's actually like bars and then you stick the kid in. And I'm like, I don't think that Gio would ever go for that at all. <laughs> he likes to be free range so yeah I don't think that's gonna work but with the second one coming <laughs> now you can wear you can wear her <laughs> yeah she'll be lighter I'm sure <laughs> yeah well and then you'll have the whole like he was this way and she's gonna be this other way yeah so you may not see what's coming I know I'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> do you think that you'll do um like what's your sourcing like because that's always a big like pain point for people like how do you get the sourcing done is it easier with the baby is it easier with the toddler do you do it online what are your sourcing thoughts so right now well ever since I um got pregnant with the first one um we were like extremely broke and so I really didn't have a budget to go sourcing anymore and um so I started taking donations from friends and everything and I even um during this broke time, I was like, I'll sell your stuff for free. Like, I'll just sell it just to bring the traffic to my closet. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you have a Kate Spade bag? Great. Like, I'll just list it, give you the money for it. I don't even care. I just want to, like, get the algorithm up, you know? Interesting. And so I did that for a very short time. Then also just, like, letting people know, oh, I'm not working anymore. I'm going full time, like, to my husband's coworkers and stuff. They started sending me bags and bags and bags of clothes that they would just send to Goodwill. Nice. So I've literally been receiving bags and bags and bags of stuff for the last year. So right now I have like I've been sourcing like once or twice. I went to the bins once, which was awesome. And yeah. then I went to the thrift store once. Um, but like I said, with the baby and first time postpartum, like that just like yeah hit me like a brick. I did not see that, like, see that coming. It was, like, a really rough, like, three, four months for me. But, um, so I don't know how it would be sourcing. Um, Phineas is a really, really content baby. So I would say, like, it's probably easier with a baby, um, right. in my case, cause he's so easy. He'll sleep whenever, wherever in right. his car seat. He loves it. Um, but yeah, I've literally been uh, listing my death pile for the past year because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger with other people's stuff. Hey, if it's free and then they're just giving it to you and you don't have to go find it, don't call it a death pile. Call it a like, thank the Lord pile. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank the Lord. You can't, I like is that. It stuff or is it like, oh man, you gave this to me and I really don't want to list it. Like, is it decent or will you just list whatever because you can, it's free, it came to you. Which is fine. Most of it is decent. Good. And like I said, it's free. So they don't care if I keep it or not. I said, I'll take it to Goodwill if I can't sell it. Right. So I'll go through it. But at the same time, I see so much random stuff selling on other people's. Believe me, like I want to end up being like, you know, high end designer, like always surfing high end designer stuff and whatever. I live in Colorado. You find that a lot here. So I'm okay. like itching to get out there. But at the same time, like, I, okay, so I just listed a dress yesterday from some random brand called Love Appel. I think it's Love Appel or something. A large petite dress that wasn't, in my opinion, like that even, it was, like, I was like dreading to list. I was like, uh, like <laughs> fine. I'm just like trying to get my listings consistent. Right, right. And it literally sold in 49 minutes. Wow. <laughs> And I was like, are you serious? Like, this is something I would have never, ever picked up. I haven't up. heard of that, but that's the thing. You never know. Sometimes, <laughs> did it sell for a lot or? So for full price, I listed at like 20 bucks. I'm yeah. Because like, I looked at comps and I was like, I thought that was on a high end. Right. You never know. And that's the thing. I mean, sometimes it's, and that's why people like the relisting, which I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, when you have 
a consistent way of like getting stuff. Now I'm just in the habit of getting stuff. I always have extra stuff around. I don't, you know, unless something major would have to happen where I didn't go sourcing for several weeks where I'd really be stuck, yeah. you know, or the bottleneck is now that I'm doing the photos, I can't do the photos fast enough. And that's what's slowing me down. Um, because you know, I have the VA, she helps doing all the listings. So yeah. she'll list till the cows come home and she's like, I, don't, I need a new folder. I need a new folder. I'm out of, I'm out of photos. I'm like, we said 10 a day. Why are you, you know, <laughs> stop doing more? I don't have, I, I can't just stand here and take photos all day. <laughs> like, so, um, but yeah, I mean like when you, when you're the bottleneck, then it's hard, but keeping your listings consistent when you can do everything, but on whatever scale, if you have your sourcing problem <laughs> solved for the time being, just do it. And then, you know, when yeah. you run out, then you re then you just relist from the bottom and maybe that'll hit somebody, you know, the right way. You never know. Yeah. I'm trying to do more revisions. Do you do a lot of revising or do you feel like I put it on? I'm so bad at that. Yeah. It's hard. I give, I've gotten myself, well, cause I have things like that I listed like three years ago. Like I said, I did this as a hobby. So I just listed the stuff. I didn't even consider relisting items until like a year ago, but still at the time, like with, I don't know, I just feel like I don't find the time and it, the stuff is so old that I'm like, if it sells for $15, I'm okay with that. Right. Like, I, that was like one of the first things I bought. So okay. I'm like totally when, okay. When you have something that's been listed for three years, like one of your very first things, because I, I, I'm at the point now, if it doesn't sell in a year, I yank it. Like I'm just at that point. I also, I know when I've listed, like I, I have all these yeah. systems, I have the helper. So it's a little bit easier. Um, but if you have something that's been listed for three years, you know, it's one of your very first things. Did you list it as cute top, cute dress, or did you actually no. list it? with the proper information because i feel like everybody has those things when they first listed they may have started with cute top and cute dress <laughs> cute black dress, yeah work dress i i'm observe i'm an observer and i'm a perfectionist so when i first start poshmark like i observed a lot and like i picked up on certain things like the flat lays and like just having like a clear background or even if it's just like a blank you know blank canvas right. wall right. or whatever right good I picked up on those things pretty quickly as well as just like how other people had listed their items I could tell what was good and what was bad you know um and like I said it's the creative eye so if I saw like a beautiful flat lay I'm like how'd you do that <laughs> like yeah. you know do you do and I should have so, do you do that do you do a lot of like with the props and all of that and like not anymore styling okay I was so I that. used to do that Oh yeah. I used to do that. Like I, it's fun, but I'm not like good at it. <laughs> it takes me like a long time to get like the best shot. And I'm right. a perfectionist when it comes to like what it looks like. I want it to look like Vogue. I don't want it to look like, like I put this. I don't know. Right. That's, that's what just I me. did. I'm that's like, here's me. a flower. And I'm like, but that's stupid. Why is the flower there? It doesn't make any sense. And <laughs> that's why I never yeah. got into it. I'm like, I, I'm kind of creative, but I think I'm more like words creative. I don't really think I'm very graphic, visual, picture creative. <laughs> it just takes me like a long time. Yeah. It's too long. Yeah. Even before kids, I was like, uh, this is taking me forever, but I love like the outcome. And now but your then, threshold like, is even lower for like, okay, if it's not right the first time, it is what it is. <laughs> we don't, yeah. Um, so I guess, okay, so it wasn't until like a year, um, actually before I got pregnant with Phineas that I started to looking, looking into like full-time reselling and I started watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. So I, I came across Empty Hanger, Jenna. Yeah. And oh my gosh, like I binge watched like all of her old videos. I was keeping up with all of her new videos on the yeah. ride home from work. It was like She's an hour a long drive. Great job with her, with her closet and with her channel. And she's very disciplined in what she wants to share and what she doesn't want to share. And I really admire her. She's a little bit younger than me. Um, but I think on the, on the older end of like, maybe a, I don't mean, I shouldn't even say like 
she's younger than me. So I look at it, but anybody younger than me also kind of like, oh, they're just one of these young people that are on Poshmark and they're going to be a full time, you know, pre kid. It's like mm-hmm. kids versus, you know, yeah. pre kids. So you have more brain space and time oh, of the day yeah. to get it right. And I feel like I'm always trying to shove things in pockets of time that I happen to get that I don't yeah. ever really have a proper way. But maybe if I did, I wouldn't be that way anyway. I don't know. But she does a great job. And I, I, oh, she does a much. phenomenal job. Yeah. Like, I, when I start watching her, cause I was watching like a few other people, but she was like one of the first ones that popped up on YouTube mm-hmm. and her process videos. I'm like, dude, like, I love your process. You're making money. It's just hanging on a hanger. I mean, now she uses like manic, like um, a dress form and she'll do like, she has her like photo box, like her mm-hmm. shoe box or whatever. Mm-hmm. But even without all that, I'm like, that's, I can see that being my business model so ever since then like I've just hung things on hangers white wall picked up go yeah call it probably the best tip I ever got from her that's where I found out about picked up oh my gosh I'm like obsessed with it (laughs) fantastic and like I mean I even do the full because I don't have bad looking walls they're just beige and then I have the white and even still with that you still need the picked up go to make it Mm -hmm. really the best (sighs) Even um, with the light pen, I'm like, dude, I can't believe these photos are so dark. It's crazy. It's hard. It is hard. The quest for the perfect photo, but I've kind of given up on that too. As long as it's bright. Yeah. You know, bright, bright. not all haphazard on the hanger. Those are probably my two things. Bright, and as long as it's laying straight on the hanger, everything else can be amok. Yeah. <laughs> I love, so I was just talking to my husband the other day, um, about, I want to do like a video for us and maybe I'll put on the channel. I don't know, but like of all, cause I've taken photos now of Gio in 50 different ways of being involved with reselling, like whether he's knocking over the boxes or he's putting labels on them, or I just shove them in a postal bin or like, you know, all these crazy things that I've done with this poor kid as a result of reselling. And I see like, you've got, you know, the, the baby carrier next to your packages and stuff. Keep all those, you know, together. Cause I think as they get older and you, when they can know and ask you about your business and talk to you about your business and like all of that cool, like, It'll just be so cute. So I'm going to go back yeah. and try to find all of them because <laughs> it is really cool to see how they can grow up in yeah. your business, you know, and you're showing that as an example to them. So, and then mm-hmm. it'll be cool because you have a boy and a girl, you will we'll have a girl. And so, I don't know, she may be more into it because it's, cool. yeah. maybe he might be more into it because he's going to have the entrepreneurial like you, like you <laughs> know. Um, yeah, but odds are one of them will think it's the coolest thing ever. And one will be completely embarrassed. I would think <laughs> <laughs> as Gio gets yeah. older, that's what I ask the moms that have, you know, older kids, like, are you, are your kids embarrassed by it? Do their friends know what you do? Do you tell yeah. them? What? Because I, I think about that too. And it's, you know, I don't mind telling other moms now when our kids are little, because most of them at least in our area, like it's a lot of stay at home moms. So they're not doing anything. So, and I don't mean anything. I mean, as far as working outside the home and bringing yeah. in additional income, let me, or that. Turns into <laughs> thing. And so, so, you know, if you're, if you're a stay at home mom and all you're doing is the momming, that's okay. And so they're not going to make any judgments on me because I'm doing this little business thing, but when you're up against the working mom sometimes, then I feel a little mm. bit like, you know, because it's just a little business. I don't know. Oh, well, I'd rather be at home, but I look up to those moms. I'm like, I can barely do it. <laughs> and I have all the time and I don't, I just don't know how working moms do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't either. And I, I was a bad stay at home only mom. Like I, I'm a alpha female. Like I'm a career person. I'm a work person. Like my, I just, I can't help it. And so I know know, I've talked about it before, like being in the, just this new stage, cause you don't know about being a mom to begin with as a first time mom. And then you're your home and you're like, okay, now I'm what supposed to cook the best muffins, like (laughs) bake muffins. Like I don't, 
care about the muffins and like I'd rather <laughs> go over here and you know like do this other thing yeah that, you know like sell the baby clothes <laughs> so um, I was it, it's it's better for me to be a work from home mom yeah that's what I dig that's what I dig the most yeah I can't imagine I cannot imagine going to work going to work like outside of the home yeah it makes things very very crazy I would imagine just because you have two people and the kids to you know scheduling wise like now it's like I don't have a schedule and that's hard for the business but as far as making our life go I can pick up and put down yeah. any of the reselling stuff at any time mm -hmm. and yeah. and deal with what is right in front of me and that's the whole point of it and that's why it's awesome you know so mm -hmm. It makes it cool, except for when there's a clearance sale at Style Encore, and I can't go <laughs> because I have nobody to help with Geo. Then that's Aww. when no one should talk to me for a good week because I'll be very upset. <laughs> but luckily, this year, this quarter, they have them like every quarter. I've gotten to go to all of them. So. Oh, nice! And Ross clearance. Did you did you do any Ross clearance? Have you heard about that this time around? Because you were. Doing I think I've heard of it. I've heard of it, but I haven't done any of those sales. Like okay. I'm dying. <laughs> well, me. mark it on your calendar for next year. Cause they'll both be, you know, oh. older. And, um, yeah. Cause that Ross clearance was pretty cool in January just to be able to go. And it wasn't, I've really seen a, some of those things. Yeah. It wasn't a sale, but it was like everything was turned <laughs> down and oh wow, to all the stores. In Orlando. <laughs> like, went to as many as I could every day. But I got a lot of stuff, so it was good. It was worth oh, it. I love doing that. It's so much fun. Yeah. And I'm the lady that, like, there's a YouTuber, Orlando Coupon Queen, who's the one whose video I saw that tipped me off about it. And it goes, you know, it was nationwide, but it was this lady here in Orlando that yeah. I guess that's how I found out about it. Maybe there were other people posting about it. I don't know. Um, but I saw her at one of the stores, and that was cool because it's like, I'm oh, wow. <laughs> still when you meet a person that you watch on YouTube, I don't even watch all her stuff, but it was like, I went up to her, like, I was, I had a total fan yeah. girl, like stupid moment. And I'm like, <laughs> what an idiot, but it's fun. Like if you yeah. meet somebody that you watch all the time, I'm sure they're cool. stoked about it. Yeah. It was fun. I'm a dork. <laughs> One of the things I want, I really want to ask you about, cause I just saw it on your Instagram and then I'll let you go. Cause I want to be mindful of everybody's time you have on here non-toxic minimalist <laughs> tell me about that because i and again i want people to you know learn all the reselling stuff and everything but it's also just cool like i've never had a non-toxic minimalist that i know of on the show i want to know about that and i'm sure everyone else <laughs> would like to too like is that something you've always done is that a recent thing is it because the kids it's a recent um it's a recent thing but it, it's been going on for okay well the the minimalist thing has been going on for about maybe three years now. Um, that didn't happen until I moved to Colorado. Mm. We left everything back in Maryland. We thought we were going to like move it all out here, but we just didn't have the resources to move all that crap out, right, right. <laughs> out, there, out here. But um, I was just like overwhelmed with just like stuff on the counters, even just like the little bit of stuff that we had. It just like, stressed me out, took away from my day. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to focus my, my mental space and my heart on my husband and the Lord. And it was just causing me so much anxiety on my days off. So I ran into this, um, blogger called Ali Kazaza. Okay. She's like a minimalist coach or whatever. And I mean, just like everything that she spoke about just like spoke to me. Um, and so I started minimizing everything. So now we're like minimalist. We're minimalist. Um, not like extreme minimalist, but you know, we just purge all the time. We don't bring things into our home that we don't absolutely love and or need. And then um, the non-toxic thing has been going on for about like four or five years now. Mm -hmm. And since we moved to Colorado, it's like a totally different lifestyle out here, which has helped us rid like our pantry and 
our cosmetics and our cleaning supplies. Like we only clean with water. Oh. I know that sounds weird. Um, not like we have soap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, I'm like a freak. I'm like a freak but when so it comes it, to that kind it, of stuff. It wasn't like you grew up this way. This is a recent transition. Mm -hmm. Did you have to do yeah. it? Like, this is something that really appeals to me. Less than minimalism, more than non-toxic mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm not the only person that lives here. I have a husband, I have a son, I have a dog. <laughs> they require things just as much as I do. And so I feel like the minimalism is hard. I'm constantly decluttering, but then the stuff constantly comes in. I also find being a reseller sometimes you're bombarded with stuff yeah. as a reseller, which most people aren't for their job. And yeah. so I think we're hypersensitive to stuff because we're constantly lugging stuff, moving stuff, hanging yeah. stuff, holding stuff, shipping stuff, carrying stuff. There's stuff all the time. So I think we're like, now wired to be sensitive more to stuff but like we just recently I said okay I'm gonna get rid of the body wash I'm gonna buy you know non-toxic body wash so I found like a mm -hmm. Castile soap mm -hmm. um which seemed like it was a very plain and minimal thing with just essential oils in it or whatever and kind of <laughs> I did, like I kind of expected that it wouldn't foam up <laughs> that much, but it actually foams up okay. But it yeah. leaves like a not softy at all. Like there's no moisturizing or anything in it, which I I'm, I understand, but I didn't realize what that feeling was gonna feel like. And you can use it on your hair and your body. Yeah. So my husband's bald, so you know he doesn't have to worry about that. But I'm like, I don't know if I be okay with how my hair feels like what do you yeah like what do you I'm just like did you experience something like that or is that yeah not, yeah um hold on can you hold on yes, for one yes, second yes, I'm just gonna yes. go grab Tinea yeah. real quick yeah yeah and sorry if you for those that are watching if you're not interested in this it's just you know hello I work from home all by myself and when you find somebody that's actually into something that you're curious about I want to take the opportunity so you know if you're not into this that's fine I won't hold it against you if you leave now um, but if you're interested and I think this is something that you know as moms especially when our kids are young if you can afford to try to get some of the things that you know help you be more chemical free like we got all the baby Gannix line for geo and that's what we registered for when he was a baby and people bought us a bunch of that and then we just kept it up after we used that initial stuff um but as i was looking through it i'm like this isn't even actually organic it just says baby Gannix and has a lot of things in there that sound naturalish but there's also a lot of things in there that sound not like they're not supposed to be in there so i was kind of pissed yeah. off <laughs> that don't even get me started we could do like a whole nother youtube thing for that. um but yeah i experienced what you're talking about because before i really went non-toxic and I, as i was like looking into it and stuff i went coolest they say okay um, so i stopped using shampoo i don't i don't know what i was using at the time um but now we use the um dr bronner's cast style soap like that's, the baby oh, one. Style. yeah that's exactly what it is that's exactly what i have i have the peppermint and the lavender nice so separate yeah it it is um they do say like it dries out your skin too um but like i know that's like the only thing i'm going to use because like i know like what you're talking about the baby gannix or whatever it's called it's like they say that they're non-toxic but they're not so there's like a lot of green washing products out there um, but so I put it in this, um, foaming pump bottle with water and I just put like a little bit on the top of my scalp mm -hmm. and then I rinse it and then I use apple cider vinegar. It's like about this much apple cider vinegar in like a squeeze bottle mm -hmm. full of water. And then I do that as the rinse mm -hmm. and it makes your hair super soft. Interesting. Um, and you can like add essential oils. Like sometimes I'll put like tea tree oil or like peppermint in there. Yeah, I'm all, like, I like the essential oils and I have all that. I bought it when Gio was born, figuring that I could use them for different things for him. And I, and I have, and I'm really happy we have, um, when he gets older and he's afraid of monsters, 
you need monster spray. And so, you know, to get rid of them. And so you just put the essential oils in there and keep yeah. that on, you know, with the, what do you put? Distilled uh, alcohol and then the yeah. water and you just spray for those monsters and then they don't come back. And That's so, awesome. Yeah. So monster spray for sure. Um, yeah. And uh, so he has that. And then what else did we use it for? We used it for a couple things. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so there's this, um, so there's this website. Remember this ewg.com. It's stands for environmental working group.com. And it's a third party website that has no relation to any products. It's a nonprofit and they have researchers that research every um, cosmetic product on the market mm -hmm. and food product. Yeah. They have like two separate um, like sex or whatever. Right. And I just like say there's like a brand out there that <laughs> <laughs> say there's a brand out there that um, I'm not sure of. I'll put in like, I'll just Google say like Dr. Bonner's. EWG rating or Dr. Bonner's baby soap EWG rating. Right. And then click on the website and it'll take me. And it rates like from, I think it's A to F or whatever. Okay. And it lists like every single chemical that they can like get from the company. Yeah. And then that chemical you can like literally click on. And see what it does what to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like if it's like hormone, hormone disruptor, right. um, that's yeah, it's like causing the, the uh, we have the app Sift S Y F T, and it's for food products. And so when you're oh. at the store, you can scan the bread or scan the whatever, and it will tell you if it's red or yellow or green. Oh, nice. If it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, it's and if it's red, it's like bad news. And so you know we've made a lot of changes because we're like, oh no, you cannot buy that bread anymore if there's red stuff on there. No, no, you can't. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so that's been helpful. So it's, I guess it's the same idea. Yeah. Um, it's very similar. Yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you. I will check that out because I mean, it's something I've just kind of started. Like we stopped using dryer sheets and now we use the laundry balls. I got a plant-based laundry detergent and stopped doing the fabric softener. Um, and like, that was the one thing that realize. like, that's the one thing, this fabric softener. I saw like, um, like a photo meme or something of like the snuggle bear or whatever. And it, it said, it just like had all like this, all these facts about the, what you're sleeping in, like what your face is up against, what you're wearing and everything. And that was like one of the first things that it just clicked in my head. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sorry. I totally cut you off. No, no, no. That's, that's great. And I, I feel like I'm like, all right, great. I'm not buying dryer sheets again, the laundry ball. Uh, maybe I'll link them if anybody wants them. I've checked. Um, haven't put all that kind of thing on my reseller stuff, but maybe yeah. I'm talking about it, people would be interested. But the laundry balls were not expensive, and those were from Amazon. Yeah. Um, and it saved you a lot of money. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I mean, it's a money saver and the chemicals, and then, you know, one could argue better for the environment, too. And mm -hmm. I think everybody, one or the other, is like, either you're doing it for health reasons, or you're doing it for the environment, or you're doing it to save money. One of them is going to outrank the other right? Like I care about all three, but I probably care now about the chemicals first. And then I care about like the money second. And then I care about the environment. And if it hits yeah, all three, the same way. more power to everybody, but you know, I'm going to not live for forever. And so I don't know what to tell yeah. you about that. And Gio will, and that's good. And his grandkids will, or we're all going to be obliterated. And so it won't matter anyway. So. <laughs> I don't know. We're all going to die anyway. I know. I'm so sorry. It's so terrible. Like, no. I'm going to get a lot of comments. On this. <laughs> Watch. I don't know if you have it. And I don't know if your husband's on board, but one way I got my husband on board with whole, like, I like literally threw away large, full top, like, um, tide, like bottles of tide, like the really, like the sports kind and stuff. Mm -hmm. I got my husband to allow me to throw away like half filled laundry stuff from watching the documentary called The Human Experiment. Oh, okay. It's been out for about at least at least four years now. It was on Netflix, and I oh. think you can probably rent it on Amazon Prime or Amazon or YouTube or something like that. But um, yeah, we haven't seen it. that we'll one really. Those. I haven't seen that one, but we'll check that out. The Human Experiment. It's really good. Yeah, I um, I gave away 
the last of my fabric softener because I felt really bad just dumping it. And I'm like, I'm sure someone, like I asked some neighbors and then one of the kids that Gio goes to school with, she said that she just uses it for her towel. So I was like, all right, here, take this. So I put it, actually, she needs to give me my Tupperware back. You always need your Tupperware back. You can't let people steal your Tupperware. You have to yeah. <laughs> she give my stuff right back. But um, so I gave her the fabric softener and then the dryer sheets. I just waited till we ran out. Like I, oh, what? Okay, just me. <laughs> Maybe this will be where. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I didn't know. You hear me? Do you hear me? I can see you, but I don't hear you. Okay, so we'll we'll go ahead and end it. Um. I will go ahead and link um, Ashley's information and Instagram down below. It's Avon Ashes on Instagram. Go ahead and follow her. She's got a beautiful Instagram feed. And I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. We will see you in the next one. Bye.